I don't know exactly where the idea came from. I think it's uh, I think Launch.com was interested in in putting forward their their um, player, their software for their player, and so they uh, were coming to bands, I think, and asking if bands would put some put up some songs that were exclusively available in that way, and then people would download the player and also uh, download the songs, and they had offered to pay us uh, a dollar a download if we were interested in being involved and I think we felt a little bit silly about taking money for people to download software and, uh, and since it seemed like there was a real uh, need for that money in uh, in Kosovo I think it was actually Mike from my band that came up with the idea of um, of putting the songs up and then giving the, the dollar from each download to uh, to Kosovo I think there were just some remixes that we thought were interesting that uh, that hadn't been used on on any 12 inches or something so we just thought that would be an interesting way to put them out there uh, we had some friends of ours who uh, who are involved in researching different organizations uh, research what organizations uh, are doing work in Kosovo and what kind of work they're doing and and those were the two organizations that were recommended to us were Karen Madre as as probably being the best places to give that money to. I think it's actually free for them to, to download the, uh, the software and to listen to the music. It's just, uh, yeah, I think that's been kind of a misconception of this whole thing is that people think that they have to pay a dollar to, uh, to download the stuff, but actually it's just that the software companies are interested in, in having people download their software, so their the software companies are donating that dollar and it's free for people to download. Getting the talent for the shows happens in a couple of different ways. There's kind of a committee of people that work on it, and sometimes it's artists approaching us and asking to be a part of it, and sometimes it's us approaching artists. Sometimes I make a call or other people who are on the committee make a call. Um, I think they feel that it helps. I think the people in, in Tibet are, are very excited to know that people in other parts of the world care about what's happening there and, uh, and that people are... are are working to try to help them. I think that it's very inspiring for Tibetans from some of the stories that I've heard. Uh, I heard one story at the at the last concert that that there was people uh, that there were young Tibetan people sort of secretly huddled around uh, uh, radios listening because they weren't allowed to be listening to the concert. They were picking it up on shortwave radios. Some of the Tibetans have shortwave radios, and so if you can imagine, sort of a uh, um, Young Tibetan people like listening to the concert at the risk of, of losing their jobs or or, uh, or being you know punished in different ways for even just hearing the concert. It's just interesting to see these kind of like these two cultures coming together in this place. Like it's almost like uh, like like two different worlds like meeting there. There's sort of the uh, a traditional Tibetan. Uh, there are a lot of older Tibetan people that are very traditional and they're sort of like watching the concert and the slam dancing or whatever and like talking with each other and they're uh, it's just interesting hearing some of the, the kids reactions and, uh, and some of the, the Tibetan people's reactions to how they perceive each other and so it's really interesting